hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So in this video today, I'm going to show you hybriding the batteryless um, solar generator that I built out in the last video, um, using the solar panels to uh, charge the device. And I'm going to hybrid that into my solar cooker setup. So I'm just going to move this stuff out into the sun a bit where I can get better lighting, if you will, on the gear. I'll do the basic plug ups and then I'll walk through how everything kind of hooks together. Yeah, so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm just out at one of the school fields that's close to my house. We're getting a little later in the afternoon and the sun is a little better at this location, so I thought I'd fill from here. Uh, I know there's a bit of noise in the background, I'm near a main road, but such is life, right? So, in this video, I've got a two liter that I've filled up with water. I've got the battery uh, batteryless solar generator that I built out in detail in the previous video. I've got my Go Sun Fusion solar cooker, which is a hybrid electric. Then I've got a 175 watt flexible Renogy solar panel that you've probably seen in other videos if you've watched my content in the past. So I'm just going to take the MC4 connections that are coming off of the solar panel and I'm going to plug those directly into the MC4 connectors that I have on my battery this generator and plug that in. So it's now supplied with power. Now I'm going to take my Ghost on Fusion. I'll switch angles here and kind of come in and do a close-up on this stuff. So give me two seconds. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, it's always good to stop and kind of get better angles on things as you go, right? But uh, needless to say, this is the Ghost on Fusion solar cooker. I'll just pop it open. I did a short video on this in the past, but I didn't really do the full detail of it. So it has a cooking vessel that opens on the side and I can plug in a 12 volt um, cigarette lighter adapter so I can hook that directly onto my batteryless um, solar generator unit and in essence amp this solar cooker so it works at a far more accelerated pace so before it gets too hot I'm going to turn around and take that two liters of water that I have and I'm going to pour it into the cooking chamber and I'm going to put in the entire two liters I believe the capacity on this uh, Go Sun Fusion is about three liters. So I still have room to spare, if you will. But uh, I wanted to do a good volume of water to give a good example. Now the thinking really is, this water right now, it just came out of my tap at home. It's sitting about 10 degrees Celsius, which I think is about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, if I remember correctly. Okay, so the entire two liters in there. And I want to get this temperature of this water up to at least 190 degrees Fahrenheit or about 87 degrees Celsius. And it should sit there for at least like a 10 minute period or so. And the reason why I want to kind of achieve this, I don't have any thermometer with me, so I'm going to definitely be guessing at the temperatures, but hopefully I'll just hit a boil and we'll just know. But uh, the thinking really is I'm going to open up the solar unit and I want it to get up to high enough temperatures where if this was not potable water that I put into it, um, that I'd be able to safely get it to a boil. And that way, there, uh, if there was any pathogens in the water, I wouldn't get sickened from them. So I'm just gonna pop the legs on the cooker itself. I'm gonna set those open. And then that's gonna be Positioned and make sure that my water is not sitting on an angle. That's going to be positioned to catch the sun through these kind of bent mirrors, if you will. And now this unit will work effectively on its own. I don't need to give this electrical power, but in order to accelerate it, the thinking really is I'm going to take my device, plug it straight into my cigarette lighter adapter, and I'm going to turn it on and I can see I'll try to get the camera on a better angle I can see that the light has come on so not only am I taking uh, heat in from the Sun directly but I'm also taking heat in from an element that sits inside this that's powered by the solar panel and like I say I expect that this will accelerate the speed at which I'm able to bring things up to temperature and normally a solar cooker if I was to do two liters of water off 
would take an hour and a half to two hours in full sun to bring it up to a boil, if you will. I'm hoping to cut that time in half using the hybrid solar power through the batteryless solar generator. Like I said, as I described in previous videos. So I've set this out now. I'll cut scenes. I'll show you that I'm lit up off of the DC, so I know I'm taking additional heat in. And then I'll just let this thing go for a bit and kind of come up to temperature. And I'll tell you roughly how long in time that it's going to take. Right now it's 1.30. So I'll use this as being a 2.30 from now. I'm hoping to have it where this water as, is at a boil or very, very near it. We'll see. So like I say, I'll cut scenes and show you the power's flowing through the batteryless generator. And then I'll just kind of give it some time to go, yeah? So I'm really hoping that the camera is picking this up, but you can see the red light lit up on the cigarette lighter adapter to let me know that the power is flowing. And I'll just leave that in the shade so this unit doesn't get hot from sitting in the sun. But uh, like I say, the thinking really is this will just be auxiliary amplified power being supplied to the solar cooker to help accelerate it in coming up to temperature as quickly as possible. Now, when it comes to the solar watts incoming just from it being a solar cooker, it's rated at about 250 watts or so, give or take, for the collection area to how efficiently it'll convert sunlight into heat within the solar cooker. And the unit down below is rated at about 130 watts for the electrical element that's heating this thing to help amplify it. Now, I've done one liter of water just off of electrical and I've managed to get one liter of water to a boil in 90 minutes from about 50 degrees Fahrenheit 10 degrees Celsius water so it's easily achievable to actually get this volume of water to a boil just off the electrical I could shut these doors down and just let it do its thing and it would work but like I said to me the time is of the essence when it comes to using this stuff when you're out in the field. If you're in a situation where you need to get off uh, two liters of water to have so you got a water supply for the day, you know, you can't trust relying on every day being sunny. The faster you can achieve these things when you're out in the field, the more successful you're going to be. You know, obviously I could sit this, let this sit for a longer period of time. Uh, when I was out in the field if it was gray skies and that kind of thing But you don't really want to take a risk when it comes to Decontaminating any water and that type of stuff, you know to make it uh, Pasteurized and safe to for human consumption that kind of stuff. So I know that this 175 watt solar panel should be putting out about 130 140 watts, which is very very close to the maximum amount of consumption that i'm gonna be able to input into the heating element off of the cigarette lighter adapter so i'm expecting that this is already working at full power just from the batteryless solar generator hooked up to the solar panels and the additional watt power btu if you will that's coming in through the collectors of the solar collector um, really is easily enough to do that on its own as well. So I know I'm kind of rambling a bit. Like I say, hopefully the camera caught it. I, I'm trying to keep it in the shade where the, the light's on. Like I say, I believe there's about 10 amps, maybe 11 amps worth of power that's flowing through these wires and into this element at this time. So it was 1.30 when we started. I'll come back at 2.30 and I'll show you so, where I'm at. Yeah. As you can see, it's a fairly low signature. You could have the solar panel leaning up against a tree or on the top of a truck or van or any of that kind of stuff, right? Um, I've, I've been wanting to hook this onto the roof of my truck, but I've been resistant to do it because I do like the flexibility of just being able to drag this thing out and set it wherever I want it. But as you can see, it's a very low footprint. Now, the solar panel is only, I think, about seven or eight pounds. The solar cooker is about 14 and the batteryless solar generator is only about two or three pounds So it's easily packable for this stuff. You wouldn't want to necessarily take it hiking with you But if you wanted to move this in and set it up in some sort of off-grid location and have it where you could use it for the long term This type of weight and uh, you know usability is definitely definitely doable if it's a little awkward with the solar panel, you probably want to go with one that you could roll up, you know, more like a, a highly flexible one. But they, den generally speaking, don't last as long. But, like I say, I'll stop rambling. I'll cut back about 2.30 and show you where we're at. Okay, guys. 
So it's two o'clock now. The water, the two liters of water has been in here uh, for about half an hour. So I'll just kind of pop it open and take a look. Yeah, I'm seeing heavy bubbles in there and it's hot. It's, it's barely, I can barely keep my fingers in there. It's starting to scald my fingers if I leave them for too long. And that's at the point of a half an hour with this setup. So if you've seen the uh, Go Sun Fusions in the past and previous videos and that kind of stuff, I haven't done a lot of videos on this, but they're out there on the web of this thing has greatly accelerated just by using the solar panels and definitely help amp things up. That's hot enough where I could mix that with a bit of cold water and have myself a lukewarm bath. And that was within a half an hour's time. So I'll cut back again in another half hour and we'll see if we're at a full boil with this. So when I thought I'd just pop the camera off the tripod there just to show you guys, we're still at about the halfway point or half hour mark. But as you can see, there's significant bubbles all through the tray. It's definitely coming up to temperature very quickly. Like I say, that's a two liter capacity. There's enough water in there for a single person's, uh, you know, critical supply for an entire day. So I'll come back when the half hour has passed again, yeah. So while I'm waiting, I will just kind of stop for a minute and mention of why I decided to show the example with just water instead of cooking food. And uh, generally speaking, water is going to take the highest amount of energy to raise up to temperature so if i used food there'd be a lot of air in the chamber and that kind of stuff and air heats up very rapidly then foods can cook a lot faster than water can come to a boil so water is a good baseline example for me to use when you see me using this in future videos i'll be cooking food in it and that type of thing but this really shows you more of kind of the worst case scenario of how much energy is needed to heat up that chamber. Like I say, water has got the highest BTU rating, you know, and that's really, you know, how much energy does it take to bring an inch square, say, up to one degree increase in temperature? And the, you know, there's uh, whole charts and everything on the web for BTUs and that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna go into full detail of explaining that all out now, but you know, it's really how much, you know, whether it's a centimeter or an inch, and what the material is of how much energy it takes to put into that material to increase the temperature and water is really one of the worst case scenarios when it comes to using this setup as an example so if i can do water to a boil within an hour at a two liter capacity it shows that if i was cooking foods that weren't as dense and had air in them and the other things they would just cook at an even faster rate so I'll cut it again and I'll wait for the half hour to pass and come back at the one hour mark and I'll show you where we're at. Um, I'm expecting that we should be at or near a boil by that point in time. So I thought I'd kind of just throw in a little side comment into this video. So as you could see in this example, I'm really using the solar panel to fully power through the 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter, the electrical component that exists within the Go Sun Fusion. If I had a second one of these solar panels that I connected in parallel with this setup, I would also be able to use the inverter that's attached to this batteryless solar generator that I built out at the same time. I don't have any equipment with me to show that, yes, I could charge my, even right now, I could plug in to the USB that's on the inverter. I could plug in and charge my battery or of uh, my phone and that type of thing. But uh, in order to use the inverter at full um, power, if you will, I would definitely have to have a second one of these solar panels sitting in place. And I've been debating on whether I'm just going to pick one of those up. Of, I'm, I'm really debating on whether I'm going to attach the solar panel to my truck or if I'm just going to leave it loose. I really like having the flexibility where I can do things like this in my videos and just use this as a power source to give examples of what I'm doing. But, uh, but yeah, to fully understand how you could set this up off grid and really have it where not only is it dealing with your cooking, but it's also giving you AC power and USB power all driven off the solar panel. All I'd really have to do is step up the solar panels and I'll double them up. These solar panels right here are 175 watt solar panels. If I doubled that up, uh, you know, I'd be well over 300 watts that I could use to charge, you know, 
know, lights and to charge other devices and be able to cook my food when I'm out in the field for extended periods of time. This equipment is rated to last for years. You know, you could upgrade, I've, when it came to the batteryless solar generator, I used all relatively cheap components and built it to a small scale, but you could definitely, you know, step all of these things up. You know, the Go Sun Fusion is probably the most efficient solar cooker I've ever seen in my life. And I've been playing with them for, I don't know, 20 years at least. I've built many myself. And uh, I chose to go with that mo model for one, because it's got the hybrid electric, it allows me to amp up the speed in which it heats up. But for two, it really is the most efficient model on the market and works the best. But uh, you know, these solar panels are rated for I think 10 or 15 years warranty on them. But uh, you know, in my lens, if you get five years out of flexible solar panels, you're doing great. And uh, if I stepped up the quality on the um, battery list board there you know the fuse box really isn't gonna go anytime soon and neither is the uh, dc to dc converter but the cigarette lighter adapters and the inverters that's kind of the weak point in those in those style systems so you really you know if you get top of the line quality you shouldn't have problems and uh, if you had a rigid solar panel instead of a flexible one you could set this kind of setup up at an off-grid location and be able to use it for the next, you know, 20, 30 years without issue, within reason, you know, as long as you're not abusing the equipment and you're just using it conservatively, you'd be able to use this for extended periods of time into the future, where, like I say, because it doesn't have a battery, you wouldn't be able to store any power, but you could definitely give yourself usable amounts of power throughout the day. So, like I say, when we come up to the next half hour interval, uh, I think that brings us up to the one, one hour mark in the actual water. That's about 15 minutes away. I'll cut back and show you where the water's at, yeah? All right, fellow YouTubers. So we're at the one hour mark. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but I can already see steam coming off of the edging along here. So I know it's definitely getting quite hot in here. Yeah, I can hear bubbles and hopefully the camera's picking up the steam that's coming off this. Now oh, that's pretty good. I'm seeing bubbles rising up. I'm pretty well out of boil now. Oh, yeah, it's so hot, I, I don't even want to touch it. As soon as I touch it, it scalds me. So to me, I would see that as, you know, without having any uh, temperature gauge or anything, I would see that as pasteurized water. I'd probably let it go for another 10, 15 minutes, but with this setup, to be able to uh, boil off two liters of water from, like I say, it was 10 degrees, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, to get it all the way up to the point of 190, 200 degrees Fahrenheit, you know, close to a boil Celsius. I'm sure if I let that sit for another 10, 15 minutes, yeah, you know what, I'll probably just throw that into the video, but, uh, and just to see if I can get this up to like a full boil that comes off of it. But you can see either way, in a survival situation, a self-reliance situation, this type of setup it could be invaluable. You know, the, the capacity that stores within this is enough that you could feed a family of four by cooking the foods um, within it, you know? So there are still improvements I wanna to do to this setup as I move through time. Like I'd say, I'd like to add on a second solar panel and that type of thing, but just adding on the batteryless solar generator with a solar panel, has given me a, a boost that's at least doubled the speed in which I can come up to temperature with this cooker, given the volume of, like I said, there's two liters of, of water in there. So, you know, it takes a significant amount of energy to get that up to temperature. So, and like I say, it's hot enough, it's throwing steam now, and it's a nice warm day. Um, the location I'm in is probably in the mid 70s Fahrenheit. It's uh, um, 20 something degrees celsius so you know it's not like it's a cold day that we would easily be able to see that steam it's a nice warm day and i'm still able to see it to tell you how close to a boil i am but uh i'll cut scenes i'll give it another 10 15 minutes and it should be up to a full rolling boil i'm expecting by that point in time i can hear bubbles boiling inside of it but uh i wanted to get to a fairly vigorous thing so it's easy to see on the camera so i'll add that in as the uh next scene and then i'll start to wrap up this video because i think the example has kind of demonstrated itself thoroughly of like i said got the amperage coming in you can see a little red led but uh, I think the example I've done in this video shows that this is a very viable technology. And because it has no batteries sitting into it, you know, you don't have to worry about the cycle life of batteries and those types of things. This could last years and years and years and years, you know? So it's one of those things of having the switch that's sitting on here. I don't even have to detach 
my uh, my cigarette lighter adapter from my solar cooker. You know, I, I could easily just leave this all wired up for an indefinite period of time. So, like I say, I'll cut scenes, I'll come back and do some close-ups of the water bubbling in the, you know, container, the cooking vessel, and uh, I'll kind of see that as the video done, yeah? Okay, well, hopefully the camera's picking this up, but just to show you, it's 2.39, so I gave it, you know, 10 minutes or so more of... But the amount of steam coming off this thing, I knew it was at a full boil. So we're at that point now where I'll just open it up and I'll give you a nice close up here. So you can see the water bubbling and boiling away in there. So like I said, that was a two liter capacity to come up to a boil. You know, as soon as I open it, the temperature drops a bit, but it's definitely at the temperature where it's reached a full boil and it would be amply able to drink that water safely now and you know like I say as soon as you open it up it kind of cools down a bit but there's definitely bubbles the further into the chamber you look you can see the bubbles because that's really where the heat is sitting right but uh, but there you have it like I say two liters of water brought up to a full boil using the solar cooker and the solar panel in combination through this batteryless solar generator of you now normally i wouldn't even be using a solar cooker with this setup specifically because i have other 12 volt appliances that are 12 volt cooking pots and those types of things i'll probably do those in future videos where i'll let the solar cooker just run without having the electrical amping it up to help kind of boost the productivity and just switch over where I'm using the batteryless system to run my 12 volt appliances uh, that are sauce pots and those types of things frying pans to be able to cook food without having to have solar specific technology you know uh, these items if you get the high quality ones can become quite costly whereas this setup with the flexible solar panel and the batteryless solar generator that i have here you can use cheaper 12 volt cooking appliances that exist out there on the market you know i think uh road pro or road chef or something makes devices where they sell you know 12 volt compatible cooking pots and saucepans and those types of things but i'm going to uh cut the video at this point in time Hopefully this shows you a good example of using these two technologies together. And uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Cheers. So like I say, thanks for watching the video. You know, hopefully this uh, gave you some ideas for your own projects, you know, moving forward. Uh, I just like to work with alternative technologies and try to have more of a sustainable future. And uh, I like the idea of self-reliance technologies. My channel is primarily built around that kind of uh, thinking, whether it's be urban survival or, or bushcraft skills, you know, the self-reliance solar technologies and those types of things, uh, kind of more advanced electrical equipment that you can use. You know, I don't know where you can buy this type of technology commercially at this point in time. I'm sure there'll be some coming in the future, but uh, that's one of the reasons why I put this together was I couldn't find anything on the market that did the job that I wanted this to do. But if you enjoy this type of content, like I said earlier, please like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Cheers.